Supporting videos for the good practice guide for coffee seed production and coffee nursery management. An initiative of World Coffee Research, with support from Sustainable Harvest. Video 4. Integrated Pest Management What is Integrated Pest Management? IPM IPM is an effective and environmentally sensitive approach for managing pests and diseases. It relies on combining multiple common-sense practices. What are the different methods of pest and disease control? 1. Cultural practices These are changes in the environment that can be made to avoid the spread of a pest or disease. For example, adjusting the density of plants to favor better airflow in the nursery. 2. Physical control Pests are physically removed. For example, by removing sick plants to avoid the spread of disease. 3. Biological control Controlling diseases or pests using other organisms that are natural enemies of the pest, predators, pathogens or parasites. For example, using beneficial fungi to combat pathogens. 4. Genetic control Using varieties that are resistant to or tolerant of key diseases. For example, planting coffee varieties that tolerate coffee leaf rust or nematodes in the soil. 5. Chemical control Using pesticides it is not recommended to use chemical control without other supporting control methods. Although it can be effective at the beginning, it does not solve the problem disease and pest occurrence over time. In addition, the sustained use of the same chemical molecules on a pest can cause it to generate resistance to the applied product, making it more difficult to control in the future. By combining multiple control methods, pest and disease impact will decrease over time. What should your IPM plan consider? It is important to identify the pest or disease and know its behavior, habitat, and reproductive cycle. This allows you to create an effective control plan to reduce the impact in your nursery or avoid infections from the start. Identifying the routes by which pests and diseases enter or are dispersed in your nursery either via inputs that are brought to the site or through workers, may enable you to avoid pest and disease problems. In addition, IPM plants must be constantly updated, since pests and diseases are living organisms that are affected by changes in temperature, relative humidity, precipitation or wind speed, among other factors. To learn more about how to identify pests or diseases in your nursery, consult Module 4 of the Good Practice Guide for Coffee Nursery Management in the section Disease and Pest Management in Nurseries. When should you take action to control a pest or disease? A pest or disease should be controlled once it crosses the economic threshold, that is, when the losses caused by the incidence of the disease are greater than the expense of controlling it. By sampling pest populations or disease incidents, you will have the information you need to determine when this threshold has been crossed and when it's time to control unwelcome organisms. Regular sampling also gives you the information about how effective your control measures are. Sampling and observation should be supported by laboratory analysis if necessary. Remember, Pest and disease control are dynamic. You should always combine multiple methods for the most effective control. This video summarizes the Good Practice Guide for Coffee Seed Production and Coffee Nursery Management, an initiative of World Coffee Research. Find the guides, videos, and more information at worldcoffeeresearch.org.